Welcome to another in our series of videos focusing on the economics of trade, uh, globalization and protectionism. Let's spend a few minutes thinking about the topical issue of import dumping. So first of all, a definition. What is import dumping? Well, dumping happens when a business sells a product in an overseas market at below cost or significantly below prices that they would normally charge in the home market. Now, the, fir the first example, if you deliberately sell products below cost to inflict a, a damage on a rival firm, perhaps force them out of the market, that is predatory pricing and that's illegal. Uh, however, selling prices more cheaply in overseas markets isn't necessarily illegal. It could be a, a strategy of price discrimination, and technically that is not illegal. So there's a huge debate at the moment in international economics about whether countries are dumping, businesses are dumping their excess products in global markets. It's, a, it's an area where the lawyers make a lot of money. Now, Article 6 of the General Agreement on Tariffs of Trade allows for anti-dumping import duties um, equal to the difference between the import price and the normal value of the product in the exporting country. And obviously at the moment one of the big issues that uh, people are focusing on is the extent to which Chinese steel producers uh, who have, along with the rest of the world, excess capacity, the extent to which they are dumping their steel products into the European Union and into other markets around the world. Of course, a lot of European steel producers have found it very tough to compete with this uh, noticeably cheaper Chinese steel. Indeed, uh, China produces nearly half of the world's steel and the, the, the sort of the scale of the trade tensions overseas is clear if you just do a very quick Google search. Here's one from the middle of December 2016, uh, EU launching a new investigation into Chinese steel imports, a particular type of steel, corrosion resistant steel. Um, in fact, there's been a, a total of over 40 anti-dumping investigations uh, launched just purely about steel imports imported from China. That's across you know, 10, 15 different countries. And that's just in the first, first half of 2016. So there's a lot of debate about Chinese steel dumping. Here's a, another one from December. Uh, where the uh, competition authorities and trade authorities in New Zealand are launching an allegation that China has dumped some of their cheap steel into the New Zealand market. So uh, the evidence on steel is is hard to find. The, the, the global picture is pretty straightforward. This is this is the total volume of steel in the world economy by business in 2015, and I've highlighted in in orange here the Chinese companies that are right at the heart of the biggest steel makers in the world. Archula Missile, Mittal, of course, is the biggest steel company. China produces just under, just under half the world's steel in 2015. European Union, about 10% of the world's steel. Uh, Japan, around 6%. So China is clearly a dominant supplier in the world economy. And typically, as this chart shows, this is the price in US dollars, uh, per ton for hot rolled steel, a particular type of steel. You can see that China produces steel more cheaply than basically any, anywhere else in the world, particularly cheaper than, in, than the United States and cheaper than the European Union. The question is whether this is dumping of steel. Well, if you can prove it, then under WTO, WTO rules, you are allowed to introduce an anti-dumping tariff. Uh, the three main options. One is a percentage tariff, the so-called ad valorem duty. That's the most common duty you find. One is a, a specific duty. You might put in a, a tariff of 100 euros per tonne of a particular product. Uh, you can have a variable import duty um, linked to the situation you find yourself in. There is something called the lesser duty rule. An import duty cannot exceed the level needed to repair the harm done to an industry, in this case the European steel industry, by an unfair dumping practice. So typically in the European Union context, it's done, the, the duty on, anti-dumping duty on Chinese steel is around 9 to 12%. Well, the key thing is to think about dumping as a, as a sort of intractable policy issue. 
There's been a very significant increase in the number of anti-dumping duties around the world, many of them involving China, but not always involving China. If a company exports a product at a price lower than the price it normally charges on its domestic market, that is dumping. However, here are some key evaluation points. Firstly, we may not be sure what the normal price is, the price at which a country uses for their own domestic market. Indeed, in some cases, a country that purely exports a product, it may not even sell that product on its home market. It makes it even harder. Secondly, we have to, we have to make it clear that the price difference, it could be dumping, it's a strategic pricing decision. However, the price difference uh, between China and the European Union, for example, could be the result of pretty standard economic factors, such as higher labour productivity or lower wage costs, or even a more competitive exchange rate. Let's go back to that chart again. You know, why is Chinese steel cheaper than the European steel? Well, in part, it could be things like economies of scale and labour costs and productivity. The third point is that dumping is a, really a focus on price and, and cost. A lot of economists now looking at the wider holistic picture would say, well, what about labour standards in the, in the exporting country? Uh, you know, should that be a, a factor to think about as well when you're thinking about trade protectionism? It's also quite difficult to materially assess the scale of the injury caused by dumping. How many jobs are lost? But what does happen to profits in investment? Uh, the bigger the injury, the more dumping duty you can apply. But the, the economic impact of the dumping can be quite hard to measure. And a final point is that if you impose an anti-dumping tariff in import duty, well, you're, you're addressing the issue of the price difference. But keep in mind, of course, that in today's global trading world, most exports require imports. Uh, you know, and if you think about it, putting a, an extra tariff on Chinese steel, for example, well, that might make that might help the European steel industry, but is it necessarily going to help the industries that use steel, the construction sector, uh, the car making sector as well, who may have benefited from having cheaper steel come into their country? So dumping is a hot topic at the moment. It's a controversial issue. It's one where the evidence is often harder to find than the allegation that uh, is at the forefront of the, of the dumping duty investigations. Okay, thank you.